Tuesday, June the 11th. We welcome our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. I am Bosin Amafayi here in Lagos. Nigeria's current democratic dispensation moves one step forward today with the inauguration of both the upper and lower chambers of the National Assembly, which includes the election of the principal officers of both chambers. So we'll talk about the business of democracy as we count down to tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, June the 12th, the country's new official Democracy Day as signed on yesterday by Mr. President. Nigeria's business of democracy or the cost of political governance has been arguably described as one of the highest in the world, at least for a country, in their need of improvement in the living standards of the people. This will be a major discussion all through the week as Nigeria stands ready for the next dispensation under President Muhammad Buhari. But let's get to the markets first. A very weak day to start Monday with the market plays. Then on Tuesday, the market was down 0.36%. That's on the stock market side. At the NESD on this day, security, it was a very agreed day. But just a quick check there uh, with the NSE, uh, as far as the numbers were concerned, we're still holding down to the 30,000 psychological territory. The big story there uh, for the market yesterday was the reaction of the market to the suspension of Orlando's annual general meeting by the Securities and Exchange Commission, of course, which this today the company says it will cost significant loss for shareholders' fund if the SEC's order uh, uh, is uh, obeyed. Of course, both parties are currently in court over uh, the matter relating to the investigation audit, or what's called forensic audit of the uh, energy trading uh, company. We'll talk more about the numbers a bit later, but let's uh, get cross live to the Nigerian Stock Exchange to get a sense of where the NSC, what strategic initiatives and new uh, thinking is uh, the NSC has to get to the first half of the current year. And what's the outlook on getting more retail investors on board? Uh, let's talk to Jude, a chairmaker who is the head of uh, trading business division at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It's live to us from our studios in downtown Lagos. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the program, Jude. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Uh, so, so let's get this started. What key, what new strategic uh, initiatives and, and, uh, are in the works at the stock exchange, at least as far as your division is concerned? Thank you so much. You know, at the NSC, uh, we take global competitiveness and stakeholder appeal very seriously. And to this end, we're working towards major key pillars uh, in terms of driving the strategic intent of the exchange. So we're focusing on operational efficiency to just uh, provide the right platform to enhance trading and also to enhance uh, customer experience. We're also focusing on partnerships to form both local and international partnerships to just help deepen the ecosystem to maximize all the values that are, that are within the ecosystem for the investors that we, we, we we provide service to. We're also focusing on innovation, which is a key uh, leveraging on technology to provide the right uh, technology to drive, especially our retail strategy around uh, areas where we feel uh, we need to compete in a, in a more strategic uh, way. We're also focusing on customer uh, centricity because at the end of the day, we want the customers to have a better appeal and to be able to use the platform we provide in a friendly and in a cheap uh, manner as well. And so, so those are the, some of the things we're looking at. But what is, what is key there is uh, we're also working with other key stakeholders to provide uh, exchange-traded derivatives. As you know, the derivatives is an instrument that will help to also reduce the risk that we find in our market to just help control and reduce the volatility that we're experiencing at the market at this current time. Yes, uh, Jude, uh, we're, we're coasting towards the end of the first six months, the first half of the year. So uh, the, the whole thing is that give us a sense of how we've come within the first six months of the year. The market has seen uh, the general elections come and gone, and now the inauguration has also come and gone. So uh, post-elections and, and post uh, all of that, what is the outlook here? Uh, what's your assessment of the market? Elections starts of the way. What's the outlook for the market? 
Well, as you know, I mean, the election was a key risk uh, for the market, so we did see volumes come off significantly. Uh, same time last year, we we're doing close to 7 billion uh, trades per day, but we're currently doing around $3 billion a day. But, but the key thing is that we're happy with the outcome of the election, which went on smoothly. And the impact uh, of the smooth transition will be that we'll begin to see flows come back to the market. Obviously, the successful listing of SACO that took place earlier, and also the huge success of the listing of MTN has also helped to improve uh, market liquidity. MTN on its own trades around uh, $10 million a day, and that's, that's significant when you're looking at the sort of vol volumes that we're seeing in the market. And so we feel that having gone past all of that, we see uh, stability in the macro. Um, MI IMF has revised our growth from 2 to 2.1. We've, we see the FX uh, maintaining a, a stable format, obviously the appointment of the, uh, the new CBN uh, governor uh, will also help create the right directive in that uh, aspect. But more importantly, we think that the, just looking at the market now, when you're looking at the P-E ratio of our market, it's around in the region of uh, seven times that of uh, other frontier markets is around 11 times, and if you look at emerging markets, around 15 times. So our market really is relatively very cheap now. If you look at the dividend yield, you also see our dividend yield is around 6.6%. And if you look at other frontier markets, the dividend yield is around 45 uh, So the market presents a huge opportunity for upside. So we think our market going forward looks very, very attractive, and it's a good time for investors who are looking for long-term exposure in the market to begin to come in. So we think the market offers significant uh, upside potential. And I, I encourage all uh, investors who are looking to gain uh, significant mileage from, from investing in our market to begin to come back and take advantage of, of all the uh, various securities that we're offering. Yes. Uh, one of the class of investors we, we want to get on board, uh, Jude, and the rest of your team are the, are the exchange and the management and the top level, uh, what you call the retail investors participating in the market by individual investors. What policies and strategies are, are, is the NSD putting in place for this moving forward? The retail investor space, um, as you know, in the past haven't been very uh, um, active, but we're beginning to see a growth, an uptick in that space. Um, and, and you know, the NSC has the X Academy, which is the knowledge platform of the NSC, and that is committed to investor education because we feel uh, providing the right education will help also improve the sort of activity that we see from that, from that space. And so we also have um, the X Mobile, which is a, a, an online trading platform that Exchange is building. That will also help to drive traffic and, and, and encourage retail investor participation in our market. But, but, but I think the key thing to take away is the fact that we, have, we are committed wholly to assisting this class of investors, not just to trade equities, but also to take advantage of all the other assets that exchange is currently offering. Like, as you know, the exchange is a multi-asset uh, securities exchange, and so we have other products that we feel that these retail investors can also take advantage of. We have a growing uh, exchange-traded funds that they can invest in. We also have the mutual funds that were listed by memorandum. And we have a trading platform now that, in, that can allow uh, retail investors to take advantage and trade the mutual funds on our platform. So we think that we have provided a significant uh, outlay that will allow retail investors in the market to take advantage of all the various assets that exchange will, will, is providing to meet their own investment objective. But I think what is key there also is the fact that we're interactive so we have the export, which is an artificial intelligence port that allows an active interaction so you can lodge your complaints and get things out of the way very quickly and resolved. So we think we're ready to service that class of investors at this particular time. Yes, Jude, a final one from here. In terms of getting the market to become more attractive for, uh, for investors and investment climate, uh, is the stock exchange working with other government? agencies, uh, perhaps the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, for example? As you know, the exchange is committed to advocacy. Um, we are particularly active, especially in the area of ease of doing business in Nigeria, and also the ease of raising capital. Uh, 
in a cheap uh, manner for corporates uh, that are looking to raise capital in the market. Um, recently, we have seen a lot of corporates take advantage of the green bond. Over 23 billion naira have been raised on that platform as green bond initiative begins to take uh, deep uh, root in our market. But more importantly, because of the work of the exchange, especially in the, around the area of ease of doing business, you, as you know, in April, we received an award from Payback on the, all the works that we have done to just encourage investors to, to, to participate in our market and, and also, more importantly, to formulate policies around ease of doing business in, in Nigeria. And I think we're making progress in that respect because we're beginning to see uh, inflows um, both on the portfolio side and also a direct uh, investment portfolio um, for, for investments in Nigeria. We're beginning to see uptick in those, in those areas as well. All right. Th thank you so much. Uh, Jude, uh, Chebek, I heard uh, a business, um, trading business division at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Thank you so much. We wish you all the best. We're going to check in with you in the very near future to see how these things are materializing. Thank you so much. You do have a great day. Live to us from our studio at the Nigerian Thanks. Stock Exchange. Let's take talk very quickly and look at the commodities market. Quite a lot of stories are uh, coming in through from there. Financial derivatives company uh, forecasting Nigeria's inflation would uh, uptick very gentle to uh, very slowly to about 11.38%. Uh, that's part of the story that uh, Bolanli Agbaje is bringing on board for us today. But not just what is happening locally. You need to keep an eye on what's going on. When you look outside the window, so she's bringing up what are the big stories here for inside and outside for domestic consumers. Good morning. Great to have you. Thank you. So it uh, looks like a very long list of uh, a basket, uh, a mixed basket. Yes. I want you to unpack that very quickly for, for us. Um, so for first, first of all, we have um, the oil price today. Um, oil price is currently trading at $62 per barrel. Why do we still <laughs> start with oil? <laughs> <laughs> we can't do nothing with our lives uh, that's without a, oil. It's, it's a very important question. You're looking at the trade um, data that was released on Friday, 75% of our you know, exports is, is crude. So oil is actually very important. It drives the economy. So I think that's why we keep you know, putting a lot of pressure on oil till we get to a point where we're kind of diversify the economy. I think we're really, we're really, you know, not not so happy with the with the trade results. Why? Because you know we come here severally to talk about opportunities within the agriculture. I thought the trade surplus would make everybody happy. <laughs> I know. But you folks just said, look, the trade surplus was big. Yes, eighty one point six, but it was. Ordinarily 5% down yes. on Q4 yes. of 2018. Yes. So it's, there is still a trade surplus, but like the, the, the difference with what we had in Q4 2018 is actually you know, much higher than what we had in Q1. And, and that's just because we've not been able to tap and you know, make use of the opportunity that we have within the economy. Like um, I was reading through the report and you know, noticed the fact that the only three commodities that were dominating the agricultural sector were cashew nuts, cocoa beans, and sesame seeds. And we have various other agricultural products that we you know we could dozens. actually dozens that we could you know you know build a comparative advantage on so it's, it's we're just scratching the surface of just three products yeah. in a country with about a thousand pieces of different agricultural products that could ramp up an agriculture so uh, you folks think we, we still need to up the game yes, on that front? Yes, we do. And in the report, he also stated that, you know, our imports for agriculture increased while our exports decreased, which is not so, you know, great for us. And we have the crude oil still increasing, despite the fact that, you know, oil prices are declining at the moment. So it's not really beneficial for the economy. And we keep looking for funds for the budget. So, so we got especially worried <laughs> about the price of Brent crude hovering around $60 a barrel. We should. Should the fiscal policymakers want their down with inauguration? of the National Assembly or whatever, everybody needs I to think, get I think they would still have to go back to the drawing board because they, you know, while creating this budget, they were a bit optimistic about where all prices were. And at the time, because, you know, last year we had seen all prices go to as high as 75, very close to 80. We we're hoping it'll scratch the, you know, the $80 per barrel surface. But um, as of today, all prices are currently trading at 62. We still have, you know, the trade tension, even though we thought by now things would have eased down with between U.S. and China. They're still going, you know, head and head and head against it. Um, 
we also have the fact that supply, the huge supply got within the market and Russia seems to, you know, be loving the space it is at the moment, despite the fact that the, the, the current price of oil price, uh, the current price of oil wouldn't really fund the budget say, for 20, 2019 in Russia. But they, it seems like they still don't mind that oil prices are currently trading at $62. But we do hope that, you know, in the, by the end of June, when they do come together for their meeting, they'll find, you know, a new solution when it comes to, you know, tackling the oil prices. Uh, sh should we also consider uh, the UK's economic contraction, and not just in the UK, I think this is beginning to look around, something like that in, in Europe. Germany seems to be also buckling somehow. Spain, yes. Italy, a number of European countries are, are also uh, having some very not so good weather when it comes to the state of the economy. Then within the continent, we have our second so, largest economy, South Africa, also teetering. Yes. Yeah, so um, um, going back to the trade reports, we saw that, you know, Europe is one of our major trading partners as well. So the impact of this, of, you know, the Brexit on the European economy, on the UK economy would definitely affect, you know, trade between these countries. We do expect that in the coming months, income, you know, income in these countries would actually decline, you know, they wouldn't spend as much and which should obviously affect our exports at the moment. But um, obviously, it's we're in a global economy. We always have to, you know, be careful with what goes on in other countries because there'll, there'll be the lasting impact on emerging, you know, market economies, the same way South Africa is facing it uh, as well. South Africa, you know, uh, the debt crisis there is building on strong. Moody's currently downgraded their um, GDP forecast mm -hmm. by about 0.3%, which is not so great. I think Moody's is the only um, agency that is still, you know, keeping them above the junk status level when it comes to their sovereign debt. Although they did mention that, you know, after the the election in May, there should be a recovery within the economy, but we're not seeing that, that at the moment. Not showing up as it's not showing up, one. and it's just because of the inequality within the you know and the, and economy. the energy crisis and as the, well. Yes, there has to be some deeper seated problem <laughs> that they haven't been able to resolve. Most so likely. let's let's touch base with agriculture and talk about uh, avocado. I love this. Uh, do you? Well, it's it's an acquired taste. It's 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 nice. I, I love it. You too. know, it it has huge benefits compared to the the cost. I think avocado now you can get about two to three avocados for five hundred naira, which is very expensive. You know, when we when we you know measure it against our uh, income inequality within the country. But um, avocado it has a lot of health benefits. Uh, current production in the in the world is currently about five million you know metric tons worth about ten billion dollars which is which is is not huge compared to the other you know agricultural products we've brought on this table mm. but it's still an opportunity for you know Nigeria they always say in economics you know when it can, when a, a product is growing at a, a slower pace there's still opportunities for it to you know ramp up its its production mm. Mm. and and mm. you know several opportunities there top producers now we have Mexico Dominican Republic Peru you mm. know the 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 their major you know consumables their guacamole is, is is one of their major you know consumables within Mexico as well you know it's 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 their favorite dish and avocado is the major you know uh, product when it comes to that they're making that in, making that little dish, dish yes 10.47 billion era that's a whole lot of money it is it is. And, and the, the good thing about avocado is that it can be produced in every state within the country. Mm. You know, we're a temperate uh, uh, region. So avocado is not something, as long as you're making sure that you're watching out for pests, diseases and all that, and learning the right way to actually grow the tree that would produce the avocado fruit. I may, I may have to come for that training, <laughs> especially someday uh, on how to do some of these things. But again, looking at the market out there, I don't mind scratching ten point four seven billion dollars. Yes, I might it, just make some money. It is. It's. 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 I might just make some money. <laughs> I will let you know uh, if I'm coming through for some trading in the avocados business. Let's take a break, everyone. We're right back.